Hello student, welcome to lecture 3.3, African Americans and the Reconstruction. In this lecture, we will focus on what happened to uh, African Americans, especially to the former slaves after the Civil War. So first, we will talk about uh, the end of the war and uh, the end of the slavery and also of a major issue that was faced by uh, the slaves, and that the issue was uh, the land. How uh, how do uh, former slaves access the land after they left uh, the plantation? Next, uh, we will talk about what the government uh, was doing uh, to help uh, the former slaves. Uh, so we will talk about uh, this office called of the Freedmen's Bureau, then the Act, uh, the Southern Homestead Act, uh, one of the major law passed by, by the government during the Reconstruction, and uh, um, we will come back to uh, the land again and uh, talk about the only system that gave access to the land to former uh, slaves, and that, uh, that was the sharecropping system. And then we will uh, move to uh, the education of former slaves. And then the, the, uh, the conflict between uh, President Johnson and Congress uh, over uh, the reconstruction plans. Finally, uh, toward the end of this lecture, we will talk about uh, the, the political uh, leaders among African Americans, uh, a summary of a major constitutional amendment that was passed by Congress during uh, Reconstruction and ratified by uh, the, the people of the United States. So those are uh, the amendment 13, 14, and 15. And uh, finally, uh, we will uh, uh, deal with the end of Reconstruction. How did Reconstruction ended? So let's start with the end of the Civil War and the end of slavery. The Civil War ended on April 9, 1865, when the Confederate General uh, Robert E. Lee surrendered to the Union General Ulysses S. Grant in Appomattox, uh, Virginia. The defeat of the Confederate state also meant uh, the end of slavery because they were fighting to preserve slavery, and uh, since they lost the war, there's no one to uh, uh, to to preserve slavery anymore. But uh, it, it will take uh, the passing of the Fifteenth Amendment to legalize, to make a legal uh, the abolition of slavery, uh, which means the freedom of the slaves. So the former slaves after they were uh, free from their former masters, had different uh, reactions. Uh, some of them uh, just wants to reunite with lost family uh, members that were sold away during the uh, slavery time, uh, but uh, many of them just didn't know what to do, so they were hanging around the, uh, the house of the masters, they were hanging around the, the plantation. This picture shows us of the devastation of the war. Uh, so this is the case of Richmond, uh, Virginia, uh, the capital city of the Confederate States. But uh, most of the southern states, especially uh, cities like uh, Atlanta, a city of, uh, like uh, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, all of those cities were uh, destroyed and burned to the ground during the war. So the reconstruction uh, means that uh, uh, places like this has to be uh, rebuilt and uh, the society uh, and uh, the political system of the United States also had to be rebuilt after uh, the Civil War. Now let's talk about uh, the major issue that uh, the slaves were facing, the former slaves were facing after the Civil War. So that was uh, the land issue. 
as you know, the slaves didn't know anything, they didn't have any skills, and they did not own anything, uh, and everything on the plantation was, uh, were owned by the master, so that included the land, and even uh, the house or the cabin where the slaves were living. All of those were uh, properties of the, the, the masters. So when the slaves were free, uh, and uh, they didn't have any land, but they need, need land for economic security, for self-sufficiency, and even for uh, independence. But uh, acquiring land was not easy. It, did not, it was not even possible uh, uh, for many of them uh, without help from the government. But uh, during the war, uh, one of the uh, Union General, uh, General William Tecumseh Sherman, uh, tried to help uh, the former slaves. Actually, they were still slaves at that time in January uh, 1865. The war did not end yet. So uh, General Sherman issued this uh, order, uh, the Special Field Order Number uh, 15, that gave away uh, 40 acres of land and a mule uh, to each black family. You may have already, uh, uh, you may have already heard of this uh, uh, phrase, uh, 40 acres of a mule, but that was just a promise. Uh, nothing really happened, but uh, I, that was uh, an intention of uh, Sherman to help, uh, you know, African Americans. However, uh, the new uh, president after uh, Lincoln's assassination, the new president, uh, President Andrew Johnson revoked, he rejected uh, this order uh, six months after it was issued by uh, Tecumseh Sherman. Uh, other efforts by uh, uh, by the government and other people uh, was uh, uh, this uh, uh, Port Royal experiment. So this is an, uh, an effort by Northern white missionaries and educators and businessmen to help African Americans during uh, the reconstruction. And it consisted uh, to educate, uh, to, to give some skills uh, to um, to uh, to the former slaves. So uh, this uh, experiment tried to transform former slaves into educated, reliable, and industrious uh, wage earner. However, uh, uh, this experiment was not uh, extensive. It didn't really help a lot of people. The most important institution uh, created by the government to help uh, the former slaves was uh, the Freedmen's Bureau. So Congress created uh, this bureau, uh, originally called a uh, Bureau of Refugee, uh, Freedmen, and uh, Abandoned Land uh, in 1865. Uh, General Oliver Howard was appointed to lead uh, this bureau, uh, bureau means office, and uh, its mission was uh, to provide uh, the former slaves with land and uh, education. Uh, so the bureau was uh, responsible for educating as well as giving land to the former slaves. So it was involved also in different aspects of the lives of the former slaves. So specifically, the Freedmen's Bureau had uh, the power uh, also to negotiate contract with uh, our white uh, plantation owners. Uh, they also sometimes settle legal disputes uh, or uh, criminal disputes and provide food, medical care, and even transportation to former slaves. Uh, in addition to former slaves, uh, the the Freedmen's Bureau also helped uh, thousands of poor white uh, southerners. Uh, 
another effort uh, to give land to the former slaves uh, was uh, the, the Southern Homestead Act of 1866. So Congress passed this act uh, to set aside over 3 million acres of land uh, for former slaves and uh, uh, some sovereign whites. However, uh, the land that was uh, allocated uh, by this act was not proper for cultivation. Uh, the, the land was not fertile and uh, was not suitable for agriculture. Uh, as a result, uh, the act uh, uh, really fell uh, uh, in this uh, purpose of helping African Americans uh, to get access to the land. And only a few black families benefited from uh, this act. Ultimately, the only way for most um, former slaves to get access to the land was to go back to the plantation and uh, to work with the former uh, masters, uh, the former uh, landowners. So, uh, this is uh, called the sh sharecropping system. So, sharecropping means uh, the former slaves work the land uh, owned by uh, the plantation owner and uh, in exchange, uh, uh, both would share uh, the crop. Uh, but uh, uh, the landowner, the white landowner, would loan uh, uh, the tools, the seeds, uh, the fertilizers, and uh, even the mule uh, to uh, to uh, to the former slaves. Uh, and uh, the former slaves would pay back uh, the uh, the landowner when the, uh, during the harvest time, so they would share the crops. But uh, most of the sharecroppers actually were cheated uh, by uh, the white people uh, in this system. So uh, it was not, even though uh, African Americans, uh, former slaves, had access to the land, they end up uh, in huge debt uh, in this system. Concerning the education of the former slaves, the Freedmen's Bureau will help providing education, like we say uh, earlier. So the Freedmen's Bureau uh, built uh, schools, uh, including colleges and uh, universities. Uh, they also provided uh, teachers. Uh, so uh, by 1869, for instance, there were 3,000 schools built uh, in the South, and uh, 150,000 students were already uh, going to school by that time. Uh, so former slaves really uh, were eager to, uh, to get education. So most of them had to work during the day and then attend school at night. In addition to the Freedmen's Bureau, uh, religious organizations uh, and churches from the North also help uh, provide all the education to the former slaves. And uh, you may have known that uh, uh, Benedict College was uh, built by uh, Baptist missionaries uh, from the North uh, in 1870. So uh, most of the uh, elementary and uh, secondary education in the South were created by uh, this religious organization. Uh, but uh, there were also few blacks, few, a few uh, black students who were prepared uh, for college and uh, university work. And that's why they created uh, schools like uh, Benedict College, Allen University, and so on and so forth. Since the beginning of the Reconstruction, Congress had to fight with uh, President Johnson, who was a, a Southern Democrat. Uh, uh, according to many people, he was also uh, a former uh, slave owner. So uh, this is a conservative uh, Democrat, uh, and, and uh, once he became a president after the assassination of uh, Lincoln, uh, he tried to help 
uh, his fellow uh, uh, Democrats in the South. So uh, this fight led uh, to the so-called presidential reconstruction versus congressional reconstruction. Uh, presidential reconstruction, uh, which means uh, the reconstruction plan by Johnson, uh, included pardoning the high-ranking Confederate uh, soldiers and officers, as well as the rich uh, Southerners. Uh, this plan was so uh, uh, permitted uh, former Confederate uh, leaders to regain power, and it also allowed them to uh, appoint uh, governors, and uh, they did not include black people in the political process. So Johnson only insisted that uh, southern states accept uh, the, uh, the abolition of slavery uh, through the Thirteenth uh, Amendment, and that was uh, the only thing that they need uh, to uh, to be readmitted in the Union. So due to uh, Johnson's uh, Reconstruction Plan, which was really uh, conservative and helping. Uh, the former Confederate uh, people to get back in power, sovereign states were able to pass uh, what is known as the Black Code. This Black Code, uh, this Black Code established a new form of slavery in the South. Uh, they imposed uh, severe re re restrictions on black people. Uh, for instance, uh, they uh, require black people uh, to sign labor contract, uh, require the children to to go through apprentice uh, to apprenticeship, and uh, they even allow a corporal punishment, uh, which means they go back to weeping. And uh, the most terrible thing uh, imposed by the uh, the black code shows uh, the prohibition of uh, the so-called a vagrancy, which means that uh, if a black uh, person is caught doing nothing, then this person can be uh, arrested and put in uh, prison. Uh, the black courts also uh, prohibited other things uh, such as uh, alcohol and uh, uh, firearms. So because of the policy of Johnson, uh, the southern states were able to put back uh, African Americans to uh, a situation really close to slavery. Concerning the reconstruction by Congress, a Congress uh, led by the Republicans uh, passed uh, many laws, and uh, the most important of them was uh, the Reconstruction Act of 1867, also known as the Congressional Reconstruction Plan. So this plan divided the South into military districts, which means uh, the, the South was uh, under military control, and uh, each former uh, Confederate state, except uh, Tennessee, uh, was to, uh, to frame, uh, to write a new state constitution, and also to establish a, a new uh, government. The Congressional Reconstruction Plan also included the passing of uh, other constitutional amendment. So uh, one of them was the 14th Amendment, which made any person born in the United States a citizen of the United States, as well as the state where they live. Uh, so that made uh, African Americans uh, American citizens. Uh, you, you have to remember that under uh, the Dred Scott uh, uh, case, uh, uh, African Americans were not considered American citizens. So uh, through the 14th Amendment, African Americans uh, who were born here are now uh, considered uh, American citizens. Uh, the 14th Amendment also guarantee uh, the rights uh, of life, liberty, and due process. Uh, 
and sometimes people call it a, a due process amendment mm -hmm. as well as equal protection under the law. Uh, the 14th Amendment also contains provisions uh, reducing state representation in Congress uh, if a state denies uh, the right to vote to, uh, to uh, male uh, African Americans. The other uh, constitutional amendments passed by Congress during Reconstruction was the 15th Amendment, uh, which gave the right to vote to, uh, to African American men. So the right to vote could not be denied on account of race, color, or, or because of a person uh, being a slave. So that was very important uh, uh, in, in politics. Uh, however, the, 14th, uh, the 15th Amendment had some limitations, and actually most sovereign states just uh, go, went around uh, this um, uh, amendment because uh, this amendment of the Constitution did not guarantee a women's vote, so uh, African-American women were not allowed to vote. Uh, the, the amendment also did not uh, prohibit uh, other uh, tactics used by uh, the sovereign states to disenfranchise African Americans. So these other tactics were uh, poll tax. If you don't pay tax or you pay just a little bit of tax, you're not allowed to vote. The literacy test which means that if you don't know to read and write, then you are not allowed to vote. And uh, finally, in some states, you have uh, the property qualification. So uh, all of those rules that uh, were tactics used by southern states uh, to deny the right to vote to African-American uh, male. Uh, it was also during the Reconstruction that uh, many African-American uh, male were able to run for office and uh, be elected. So, uh, from 1867 to 1876, there were 1,465 black men who were elected. Um, so, in some cases, black men uh, form the majority uh, of state representatives. Uh, in some cases also, there, there, there were uh, lieutenant governors, but there were no uh, black governors at that time yet. Uh, most importantly, uh, 14 black men were uh, elected and served uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, Congress. Uh, 14 uh, in the House and one uh, in the Senate. So that was a, 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 a heyday of uh, African American male in politics. So uh, this table summarized uh, the three most important constitutional amendments uh, passed uh, during the Reconstruction. So first, you have the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, and it was passed uh, in 1865. Next, you have the 14th Amendment, uh, which made African Americans American citizens. Uh, that was passed in 1868. And finally, you have the 15th Amendment, which gave African American men the right to vote, and that was passed and ratify in 1870. In summary, the Reconstruction period was one of the most important uh, periods in African-American uh, history. However, uh, the, the Reconstruction ended suddenly, and many of the promises to African-Americans were not fulfilled yet at that time. Uh, so, how did the Reconstruction end it? So, that's a question that uh, we will address quickly here. The Reconstruction ended 
because of a presidential election of 1876. During this uh, presidential election, uh, two men were running. So first you have uh, uh, the Democrat uh, uh, Samuel uh, J. Tilden, uh, and uh, uh, next to him you have the Republican candidate Rutherford B. Hayes. So each one of them were close to win uh, the election. So uh, you have uh, also uh, frauds, electoral frauds in Florida, Louisiana, and uh, South Carolina. So to resolve these, uh, these electoral election disputes, uh, the two uh, political parties turned to Congress. So it was debated in Congress. Now, and the Congress came up with a compromise of 1877. So according to this compromise, a rather thought behaves uh, would be declared the winner. So the Rep Republican will win the presidential election, but uh, uh, they have to end the reconstruction. So rather third behaves was declared the winner, but uh, he had to agree also to end the reconstruction. So that's how the reconstruction was ended. So uh, that concludes this lecture on the reconstruction, which uh, once again was one of the most important periods in African-American history. Uh, please complete the reading and then move to lecture uh, 3.4 to continue.